Hello everyone, welcome to another video in regards to the World's Fairs and uh, today I'm going to just expand upon my first episode that looked into the 1893 Chicago Fair or <clears throat> Columbus uh, Exposition and have a look at um, some of the possibilities around how these things were constructed. Uh, I've, I've really come down to three possibilities and one of those three is going to be the uh, mainstream narrative. Um, and just have a look and explore through some of those and have a look at some of the images and photos that we didn't have a look at last time. So <clears throat> pretty much the first one, um, yeah, based on the uh, 1893 Chicago World's Fair, which was uh, was created as part of uh, the 400th, I think, year anniversary of Columbus's arrival into uh, America. And... Um, as with all these world's fairs, they were built as uh, temporary structures and they were, they were built from scratch in in a very, very short amount of time. So I, I've been doing even more research since the first, uh, first episode. Um, in 1890, the fair began in May 1893. Um, president Harris, the US president at the time, uh, proclaimed in December 1890 that it was going to be in Chicago. Uh, the bill was passed for that <clears throat> earlier in the year, in, in April in 1890, to have it there. And um, the... Uh, the first sort of concept design, after all the... Um, I guess all the approvals were put in place to have it. The first concept design was then drawn up in January of 1891. And then the first soil was broken in February of 1891, so only one month later. So it went from concept drawings to breaking soil within one month <clears throat> in area that was effectively uh, swampland. It's um, it's very much uh, on the, it's on the side of the Great Lake, I think it is, on the Chicago, the, the massive lake there in Chicago. It was, it was understood to be swampland, and they converted all of that swampland, uh, 600 acres worth, into what you can see here, just some of the most amazing buildings. And I'm also going to touch on today, again, I don't think we can get, we shouldn't get so um, lost on the buildings and forget about the civil infrastructure that was required all the foundations, the waterways, the pathways, the roads, the bridges, all those sort of underlying aspects of this uh, fairgrounds that's required for actually the buildings to actually be built upon. So, <clears throat> again, it's not like they came in and all these grounds were already, all these, uh, all these roadways and foundations and pathways are ready, and then they built the buildings in two years. They built the whole thing from scratch, from swampland, into this in, in two years. So, um, so the idea was for these fairs to actually be open at the end of 1892, which would effectively they they had originally intended effectively 18 months to create all of this, and um, it. Uh, took a little bit longer. That's extended out to May of 1893, uh, which is fair enough because it's like an absolute incredible um, feat. And uh, it was something that, um, yeah, would have been an incredible uh, outcome if they had have achieved it in two years. But I Again, as I stated in the first episode, I, I sincerely doubt that this was created all to be temporary and uh, all to be, uh, well, we'll also go into how all this came down as well. And this is what I'm showing you at the moment is, is just a portion of the area. These are the main, um, this is sort of the main centre, the main colonnade. I mean... So the, the idea was that these um, these were constructed um, from sort of wood and a bit of steel, and then the facades of these things were made from plaster, cement, <clears throat> jute fibre, and then painted white. 
I mean, these don't look like these. I mean, a good analogy uh, someone described is being able to tell the difference between a fake plant and a real plant. So when you look at these images, it's 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 worthwhile <laughs> keeping that in mind. Like, does this look like a fake temporary building uh, created with some uh, plaster facade and some jute matting and done so through two harsh Chicago winters as well, let's not forget? Um, or does this look like the most incredible masonry that you've uh, that you've seen? It's just phenomenal what they've done here. Um, one other point I'll touch on in this is look at the size. So I'm a landscape architect as a profession, also study sociology. So for me, this is I find this very very interesting from a landscape architecture point of view, and also from a um, sociological point of view. Uh, this whole premise and um, yeah I mean looking at it I'm, I'm looking at it from an art landscape architecture lens a lot um, hence this sort of look at more of the civil infrastructure side of things but I mean look at the, some, the size of some of these cacti I mean these things have been here and planted here for years and years and years they've been here for a long time there is the potential that they were um, planted like uh, uh, relocated, but I doubt it, especially with cacti. It's very difficult to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see the size of these people. Let's, let's suggest this guy is, say, six foot. Um, I mean, you've got a 10-foot high cactus standing there next to him. That's as high as a basketball hoop. looks even bigger than that. Um, and not to mention some of the most incredible sort of ornate finishing to these buildings as well. You can see on these pillars, I showed these images in the first episode, just incredible. Um, uh, we had a look through some of those yesterday. So, I mean, the I've, I've had a look through and a friend of mine very kindly put together a, a Google Doc with some of the, some links to uh, scholarly articles about it all. And um and the history of it <coughs> but nothing in there has convinced me of um that it was manufactured uh and constructed within a two-year period from 1891 to 1893 um and interestingly the way it all came down was there was uh, several fires the first one being in january 1894 where where they say fire destroy destroy the sh the fairgrounds um, and all the buildings. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, but like so apparently some were relocated, so they say, but I mean, for a fire to devastate this area, I, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, not in a, a normal type of fire that we would consider. Um, so there were some articles I've been through. Um, some of these are quite good. I mean, the, the understanding the... Yeah, I do have to question quite a lot of the narrative that they're spinning with it, though. Um, I mean, there's some more images of, of these um, fairgrounds. This is the uh, Fine Arts Building, I think it was, or the Manufacturer's Building, it may have been. This was the largest building constructed ever in the world at the time um, and for it to um, for it to be constructed the largest building in the world to be constructed in an incredible detail like that just doesn't doesn't compute with me I mean you can see here some of these are just in absolutely incredible architecture and design and apparently all, all destroyed by fires. Just amazing. Um, yeah, again, I've tried looking for uh, photos of um, construction. There's there's nothing really. I mean, in through here, for example, I mean, you can't tell if they're, I mean, there's no one working there. There's just a bit of, a um, little bit of machinery. Uh, 
there's no one, barely anyone in there actually doing any work. Um, it looks to me more like these things were refitted. So my contention in the first episode was that these buildings had actually been there for a long period of time. And then that two, two and a half years they say it took for construction was actually the period of time it took to refit them out, um, get them ready for the exposition, repaint them, et cetera, et cetera. But um, in all intents and purposes, the main uh, uh, sort of bodies of these buildings were already there and had been there for uh, quite some period of time. Some, I mean, the only photos I've been able to find of um, any sort of people working and constructing at the grounds are paintings and lithographs. That's it. There's no photographic evidence. And there was plenty of photos taken during that time, during that period of the early 1890s of the fairgrounds and of people being there. But none actually, no photos of actual any construction of these buildings all the civil works that are, again, I can't understate enough how much of a job it would be. It, the actual, the civil works, like, the, so basically everything from the ground level down that these buildings are built upon would have been, would have taken even longer and require much more expertise uh, than the actual construction of the buildings themselves. So I, I can't understate that enough. Like all the drainage systems, all the sewage systems, the water, everything that's required to uh, to create this is a is an would have taken incredible effort. Um, would have taken way much well over the two years that we uh, that we're being told it takes as it is. So you can see here again, some of the just these incredible, these buildings are just incredible. They really are. They're not temporary. Um, it's, these were constructed for something, for something meaningful and for something long-term. Um, however, something's happened and there's no real understanding of what the directions were and the followings were and why these were taken down. These are some of the uh, paintings of the fire that ripped through there, apparently. Statue of the Republic. And this statue is just incredible. So the contention is that these fires whipped through. Again, there's no photos of them of that fire, whatever it was that they said caused the devastation. It's just uh, paintings. Again, more paintings. There's that statue. So all of those incredible structures, all that incredible masonry, it was just as far as the mainstream narrative is concerned, it was just turned to cinder. This is a photo actually. Poe says that, that looks like where the peristyle was, where um, this then fronts onto the lake. So the lake was sort of here. The peristyle would have been constructed here. Most of the rest of those buildings look like they're still okay. I say it was over several um, several years that happened or two or three years. Looks like some sort of deconstruction going on there rather than a fire, that's the machinery hall. So, I mean, the, the three things that um, I could feel could support the building of these was that, um, that I'm gonna bring up another image of the machinery hall. Um, it shows the full ground, hopefully I can, there we go. So there's the statue that we were just viewing, peristyle. 
uh, this was the yeah, manufacturer's building, I'm pretty sure it was. Sort of the main photos that I've showed are through this section through here. But then there's also the rest of these buildings as well. This building here still stands. It was the Palace of Fine Arts. Um, it's now a museum. But notice they're all named palace. It's all, all of them are palace of something. I mean, does this not look like a palace grounds to you? It does to me. This was Chicago in 1893. Um, so that there's, there's three possibilities. One that actually was constructed uh, in a two-year period, all, all of these amazing uh, 200 buildings, over 600 acres, all the civil infrastructure, all the waterways, everything else that goes with it, and then the buildings on top of that. Uh, the, only, the only plausible explanation I feel I can give to that, that that's a possibility, was that the um, back then we're on a gold standard, so it was before cash and, and fractional reserve banking came through where then the, the uh, impetus was on um, doing building, constructing things as quickly as, and as efficiently we can as like with the lowest price materials we can from the lowest price bidder. That's, a fact, that's effectively how we basically build things these days. But this was back in a time where we were on a gold standard where uh, the cost of materials and labour was seen very differently because the cost associated with that um, was measured in a very different way. It was measured on a gold standard. Um, like our, our currency isn't actually measured against anything anymore. We went off the gold standard fully in 1971. Um, and yeah, that's created plenty of pro problems as it is, but that's the only possible explanation that I can give that because we were on a gold standard back then, we had the ability to do to build this. However, um, again, I can't find any meaningful evidence to say that to, to prove conclusively that we constructed all of this in a two-year period and it was designed to be temporary um, and that a fire would go through and destroy most of it. Like I can't understand how a fire could, could have done that. Um, the second possibility with that was that um, they were using a technology in that time period between 1891 and 1893 that we uh, don't know about and we, that we no longer have. I mean, this is only 130 years ago, but potentially there was a technology around at that time which has been lost in time that was able to create these amazing uh, buildings and the related civil infrastructure in a very, very short period of time with a minimum amount of, of workforce. Um, that's the second possibility. And then the third possibility is the possibility I lean towards is that these buildings and these grounds were actually in that, in that place for decades and maybe even centuries before that. Um, and it, the more I look into it, the more... I'm, I'm sort of, not sort of, the more I'm sure about that. I mean, I can't ever be sure. We, no one can ever be sure of anything. I get that. And I've also, like I was talking to a colleague at work about this the other day, I'm also being conscious of any of my cognitive bias around this and not, not I'm, I'm trying to use my sociological uh, teachings to not have a uh, go ahead, um, not have not have a firm sort of fixed view on this and then try to find the information to support that, which we tend to do in our, in our society today. I'm, I'm trying to keep as objective about this as, as, I, as I possibly can. I feel like I am. Um, but uh, the, my, my sort of my understanding of civil projects and landscape projects uh, combined with just a, a bit of sort of uh, uh, critical thinking, to me, points to a uh, World's Fair that was uh, repurposed, that repurposed many buildings um, to use and then the evidence of which, the evidence of that construction was mostly destroyed. One other thing I, um, I 
found out about was that this Palace of Fine Arts, so the only building that's left standing over here, apparently that was the only one constructed out of brick. I say this was the only building constructed out of brick and the rest weren't. The rest, again, was like wood, cement, plaster, jute fibre and paint, um, which, again, I just have to go back to the fake plant, real plant analogy. There are definitely some buildings in here that um, <clears throat> look like they were constructed within that two-year period. This this one here, for example. This there are a couple of buildings like this one doesn't look like it's part of the same architecture as the rest of the World's Fair. And actually, this is sort of one of the only photos I can see with actually a large amount of people gathering around. There's not many photos of like hordes of people moving through these palace grounds. This just doesn't look like it's part of the same architecture. And I would suggest that this particular building was created um, in that two year period. This just looks like a bolt on structure compared to, you can see the other the palaces in the background. It's a very, very different type, uh, very different style of building. <clears throat> This is inside. So look back down, that statue is back here. I mean, just a vast area of land. So that, that's my thoughts on the possible construction methods of this, that uh, one, if it was constructed in a two-year period, it was done because they were running off a gold standard and it was somehow possible. Two, there was a technology used that has been forgotten about or lost or three that were actually constructed um, much earlier. And to me, if I had to choose between the three, if I only had to choose two of those, it would be out of uh, a technology that was available at the time, which we no longer have, and uh, it being constructed much, much earlier. <clears throat> and it sounds more plausible to me um, and not as far-fetched, seems more practical that these were constructed at a um, decades earlier or centuries earlier rather than a technology we don't know about. That would seem much more plausible. <clears throat> so one last thing I want to uh, look at today and then I'll, I'll expand upon this one in the uh, next episode <clears throat> is that it's not just, so it's not just the Chicago welfare I thought when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay, shit, this is interesting. But then I found out there's all these other ones as well. And, for example, the St. Louis World Fair in 1904. Again, very similar architecture. A couple of dudes, they're apparently part of the construction. They more look like they're just doing some cleanup, some retrofitting. Um, this is a bust of Thomas Jefferson, the president. I mean, look at the, I mean, good on this guy for doing it, but like this looks like terrible compared to some of this architecture here. Look at this, the Palace of Transportation. Again, notice the use of the word palace. And look at the size of this construction compared to the people that are there. Again, there's hardly anyone there. One thing I want to draw your attention to, again, is the size of these trees. Again, this was apparently <clears throat> constructed from scratch um, on open fields. All the civil works are put in place. The building's constructed on top of that. But, I mean, these uh, these trees, let's, let's assume these people here are 1.8 metres. I'd say that's probably, these trees are probably at least 8 to 10 times the size of these people. So we're looking at sort of 15 metre trees. I mean, I can't quite tell what type of trees those are. It's hard to see in black and white, but I would suggest that those trees would take at least probably a minimum of 10 years and pending uh, up to maybe sort of 15 uh, to 20. I mean, in the Midwest where there's snow, trees grow a lot slower 
Um, so the, these can even be older than 15, 20 years. These could be 30, who knows? Yet yeah, we're told this is built within a couple of years, everything included. So this is the St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, look at these people. They look, it's like, what is going on here? <clears throat> Very interesting, there's rubble on the ground here. And then the most ornate finishing to these buildings. I mean, can, can you imagine constructing all this in such a short period of time? One other thing with these trees, I mean, these look a little bit smaller, but if these had just say, um, there might be an argument that these were just relocated and replanted. If that was the case, these would have uh, two to three, maybe even four stakes and tires supporting the trees as it grows. None of these trees have that. They're just freestanding, meaning that they've been there for a very, very long time on their own. They haven't. These trees definitely haven't been re relocated from somewhere else. They've been standing there for a very, very long period of time. And this is inside. So I'm going to, on the next episode, I'm going to have a look at a great look at this St. Louis um, fair um, and then continue on with many others, San Francisco, Philadelphia, um, of these constructions that were carried out. I'm going to delve more into this photo. I find this photo the most interesting out of this, out of this whole uh, article for uh, various reasons. Um, let me know if you if you can pick up on something here compared to the rest of what's wrong with this picture is, is what I'll say and what I'll ask. So, yeah, thanks very much, everyone. I hope you got some uh, uh, insight into that. And uh, um, I just find it a very, very interesting topic. It begs a lot of questions that if these things were built decades or potentially centuries beforehand, then who did it and why was the history of that uh, basically erased um, both in narrative and in physical structures? Um, yeah, thanks very much and I'll see you next time.